The Mongol Empire was ruled by Ogaday Khan from 1229 to 1241. He was the third son of Genghis Khan, the empire's founder, and the third son to inherit the throne. Some of Ogaday's accomplishments include founding a new capital at Karakoram, designing a system of governance and taxation for the empire, and defeating the Jin state of northern China, which had been a thorn in the side of the Mongols for many years. Ogodei unified a vast region stretching from Mesopotamia to the Black Sea, including modern-day Iran and Ukraine. He then went on to conquer much of Western Asia, including present-day Afghanistan, Georgia, and Turkey. The great cities of the Bulgars and Rus were sacked as his forces swept westward and attacked Poland and Hungary. Ogodei was born in 1186, the third son of Genghis Khan, the founder of the Mongol Empire. He had three brothers, Zhou Qi, Shakatai, and Tolui. Ogodei followed in his father's footsteps, aiding him on numerous military expeditions, notably against the Khwarazm Empire from 1219 to 1225. Genghis Khan had directed that his empire be divided into four khanates with each of his sons ruling one of them before he died as a result of natural causes in 1227. Ogodei was selected to rule above his siblings as the Great Khan or Universal Ruler, a position he was formally awarded in 1228 at the Kuralte Conference of Mongol Tribal Chiefs, which Ogodei at first refused, but then accepted in 1229. Genghis, meanwhile, was buried in secret in the vicinity of the sacred mountain Birkin Kuldun, and to accompany his father into the afterlife. Ogodei sacrificed 40 girls and 40 horses. Ogodei was a strange choice for Khan since he was known to be inebriated frequently. His brother Shagatai scolded him for his drinking, but Ogodei, being well aware of the problem, volunteered to have a supervisor check how much alcohol he consumed and confine his consumption to a certain amount of cups per day. Ogodei ensured he was always given his preferred drink in very large quantities. He hadn't shown much promise as a military leader, but he was likable and willing to take advice from those more experienced than him. Key qualities for anyone wanting to succeed in the convoluted world of Mongolian politics. Tolui, who had been serving as regent, handed over power to Ogodei and a new era of Mongol rulership began. Ogodei experienced an immediate issue where he lacked state funds and his followers needed rewards to retain their loyalty. Ogodei decided to levy taxes on the people his father had previously conquered. This is an idea that has been traditionally credited to Yelu Chugai, even though he was only one of Ogodei's senior ministers. Coining the well-known saying, You can conquer an empire on horseback, but you cannot govern it on horseback. While ancient Chinese sources may have blown Chukai's role in government out of proportion, Taxing rather than outright confiscation wasn't exactly a new policy when it came to better governing a territory. Because of this, people in the imperial bodyguard and ministers were responsible for acting as regional governors and overseeing the local inspectors who had to collect the tax. The success of this plan was due to the combination of government officials and imperial clan leaders in local branches. Although it led to future abuse, taxation and governance were improved between 1234 and 1236 when a census occurred throughout northern China. Ogodei was now ready to start expanding his domain, thanks to the elimination of inefficiency and revenue stability. The Mongol Empire, in order to raise funds and establish some sort of central administration, required a capital city. In short, the nomadic Mongols needed to make themselves a lot more stationary and put down some permanent routes. Ogodei began this process by ordering the building of a walled capital in 1235. The place was to be Karakoram, in the Orkhon Valley, 400 kilometers southwest of present-day Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Though only 10,000 people resided in the city at its peak, Karakoram was cosmopolitan and would be one of the first Mongol capitals. Later included were Daidu and Xanadu. Ogodei Khan never lived there but did visit occasionally. In his palace was a great silver drinking fountain that served alcoholic beverages from spouts shaped into snakes and lions. Given its location on the Silk Roads, 
merchants were attracted to the Karakoram for trade, which in turn led to the city's large and regular markets. The Khan was also known to be generous with prices, so this added appeal for merchants. Eventually, beautiful stone buildings were erected in the city. Ogode not only patrolled the roads to keep them safe from robbers, but also developed a messenger system, which spread across Mongolia. This system provided various entitlements at different rest stations for those with passports. The Jin state in northeast China, which was still governed by the Jin dynasty, remained their top priority. The gifted general Subutai, known as one of the four hounds of the Khan, led the army on the field. In 1230, the Mongols attacked the Jin. Although successful, Tolui died during warfare. The siege of Kaifeng captured the final campaign which led to Aizong's suicide in 1234, thus concluding with the collapse of the Jin state. For the first time in 1231, Korea also had to face Mongol armies on its land. As a result, Goryeo's capital was moved to Gangwe Island in 1232 by force. While the ruling class was safely ensconced on their island, the rest of Goryeo's population had to deal with six Mongol invasions over the next three decades before peace was achieved in 1258. The Mongols were now in a position to plunder southern China, which was then ruled by the Song dynasty. In the 1230s, operations began in Afghanistan and northern Iran on the western wing of the Mongol Empire. This was done to target the Khorasmians who had become a problem once again after their leader Jalal Eldin was allowed back into power. The Mongol armies invaded northern Iraq in 1235, and after many victories, they pushed into Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Armenia in 1238. The cities of the region were worn down by the Mongols' tactics, such as sacking and extracting tribute from local princes. There was then a campaign, directed once again by Subutai, which invaded Eastern Europe along the Volga River from 1236 to 1242. The force included 150,000 troops and advanced in five divisions northwards until they reached as far east as eastern Hungary and southern Poland, defeating the Bulgars and Rus in the process. Cities were burned, pillaged, and destroyed. Kiev, Krakow, and Budapest were all victim to the Mongols. Mongol scouts were dispatched ahead of the army as far as Bohemia and Vienna to investigate the situation. The Western world saw for the first time an infernal war machine that appeared unstoppable when it advanced on Europe in early 1242. Ogude, having laid the foundations for a governable empire that stretched throughout Asia, died on 11 December 1241 at age 56. He was succeeded by his son Gyuak in 1246 after a few months as regent by Ogude's spouse Torijin. If you enjoyed this video, Please remember to like and subscribe.